going to be doing this again. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about 10 top tips to up your makeup game. It's just um, a few tips that have helped me with my makeup, with um, learning a bit more, with pushing my boundaries, and it just helps me understand makeup a bit better. It's helped me be more confident with it and hopefully you'll take something away from it and um, learn something new today. Tip number one, uh, skincare. Your makeup will only look as good as your skin. It's something that I say to all of my bridal clients on the lead up to the wedding. Your makeup will sit on the skin that you have there, so if, if it's textured, if it's spotty, um, if it's, you know, if you've got some problem dry skin, there's things that you can do to try and hide it, but it's only ever going to go so far. If you've got good skin, the makeup will follow. It will look really nice on top of it. So if you don't already invest in a skincare regime, I think it's one of the more important things to invest in because you only get one skin. Um, so make the most of it. At the very least, try and start with just the basic three, a cleanse, tone, and a moisturise. This should make a massive difference. Um, and hopefully you'll see that your skin will start to look better and then your makeup will look better because of this. Get some skincare and spend good money on it, basically. <laughs> Tip number two, lip scrubs. Uh, I've run into a lot of people that don't overly know of lip scrubs or don't use them much or if, if at all. If you um, have dry or chapped lips, flaky skin, a lip scrub will really, really help get rid of that. So um, just a, it doesn't need to be like a really strong one, just a gentle one. I'd say to use maybe once a week maximum. But to use that and then put on your lip product, you'll feel the difference. It will sit nicer, it will look nicer, it will be a bit softer. Um, it can give you a bit of a plumping effect because you're doing the right movements with your lips and kind of stimulating all the blood flow around and stuff. But lip scrubs make a massive difference. My favourite is the Jeffree Star ones, They you can get them on Beauty Bay, they're really lovely, um, sugar scrubs, but I also do like the Lush ones, um, they're both quite similar, I think the Lush one's only £8, Jeffree's are 12 but they're worth it, they're very nice, and they go a really long way, but lip scrubs are fantastic, and I would highly recommend using one, especially if you use liquid lipsticks, because they dry the Jesus out of your lips. Tip number three, beauty blenders or whatever kind of sponge you like to use for your foundation and your wet and cream products. I've run into a lot of people that don't know the best way to use your beauty blender is to make sure that it's damp before you start using it. Because it's a sponge material, um, it has a tendency to soak up all the product that you put on it. So if you dampen it, I'd say squeeze it under the tap under running water about 15 20 times, make sure that it's completely rinsed out so it's not like soggy because you don't want that, you just want it to be damp and then it'll apply your makeup softer, it won't soak as much product up and it will sit a bit nicer on the skin, give you a bit more of like a airbrushed <laughs> finish. Sorry about my dog, he's grumpy. Also you'll notice when you do this, they start off quite small, they will expand quite big um, which is how you know that you've soaked it enough. Tip number four, foundation. Uh, I've run into lots of people who match their foundation. I've seen people in shops matching it like here and here. And you do want it to obviously match your skin tone. However, you're best off matching foundation to your neck because, you know, in photos, in anything, the colour of your body, you kind of want it all to match, whereas if you match it to your face, but quite often your face is paler, because if you do regular exfoliations, um, use really good sunscreen on the face in your skincare, in your uh, makeup, there's a lot of SPF. So naturally, your face tends to get less sun damage than the rest of your body. Um, so you tend to have a, your your skin on your face will be a, a little bit like a shade or a half a shade lighter than your body. So if you match it to your face instead of your body, that's when you get that kind of like white pale face and a brown body. And in photos that kind of picks up on the colour of your shoulders against your face and it makes you look super washed out. So when matching foundation, match it along your jawline and then you can see um, the colour that you should kind of be matching onto, to your neck and to your decolletage area. 
um, and then make sure that it's okay on your face. Tip number five, bronzing. I'm a huge fan of bronzing. Um, I think it just warms up the skin tone, gives you a bit more dimension so you don't look just like dead in photos or in person. Uh, bronzing just gives you that extra layer of warmth and brightens your skin back up, makes it look a bit more like skin-like. I personally like to take my bronzer where the sun will hit and it will look a lot more natural that way. So I bronze as you would normally, like a three. I don't do too much here though um, because some people will go quite heavy on the jawline and you should, if you're doing a contour, if it's like an ashy tone depending on your skin type, then that's good to make um, a shadow cast illusion. But if you do that with bronzer which is warm toned, it kind of just muddies up your neck and if you go quite heavy here it just looks a bit bananas so for bronzer personally I will bring it around here because it slims up my face a little bit down the cheekbones but I will also just drag it over the bridge of my nose and just under my eyes around my cheeks because naturally if you think about the way the sun hits you and when you get sunburn it, that's where you'll tend to catch it just on the top of the nose so if you put a bit of bronzer around the bridge of your nose and onto the cheeks it will just give you a bit more of a natural flushed pretty look um, which I think compliments most people so that's just a tip that I like to do just bring your bronzer over your nose not heavily but a little bit and it will just give you a bit more of a sun-kissed look tip number six prime your lids end of story this is something that I think makes a massive difference to your eyeshadow. If you're putting a primer on, whether it's a, a specific eyeshadow primer or a concealer, you could use some concealers. It will help the colour stick a lot better. It will help it last a lot longer and the colour will be a better payoff as well. So the colour will pack on a lot stronger. So I would definitely recommend if you're wanting a long lasting eyeshadow look with a strong colour payoff, definitely prime your lids. Personally, I my my favourite one is the P. Louise, is it? P. Louise eyeshadow base. Um, mine's in the shade 0.5, it's quite a pale one, I'll show you. But they do um, a lot of different colours in their range, so you can do different colours for the different skin tones. So it's just kind of like the consistency of a thick concealer. So I would just pop this on my eyelid all the way up to my brow bone before I apply my eyeshadow and then go on with my eyeshadow. Some people like to set them with powder. Um, I personally don't. It's a preference thing. Play around, see how you feel, but um, definitely prime. It'll make a big difference. Tip number seven, transition shade. When I first started out in makeup I had no idea what that meant and I don't think many people do but a lot of YouTube tutorials will mention it and they kind of glaze over the people that don't necessarily know what a transition shade is. So a transition shade is kind of like a near, a lot of the time it's like near to your skin tone, um, just a bit deeper and it's a shade that you want to put in between your brow bone and your crease and you want it to be your blending shade. So you'll have a shade which is just a bit deeper. So for today, mine's like this warm kind of skin tone nude, which you can just see on the edge, just around the edges, you can see. And that's my transition shade. So you'll apply that first quite high under your brow bone. And when you've got that, when you're blending your shadows out, your darker shadows, you can blend into the transition shade and that gives you a more seamless blend. So if you're starting off from the lighter colours and blending down, when you're blending the dark colours up, it will blend a lot more seamlessly and it will look a lot softer. And the kind of secret of the best eyes is just the blending. And on days that I only wear basic makeup, I will just put a transition shade on with my bronzer, some concealer and mascara and walk out the door. Tip number eight. This tip took me a while to learn because um, I like to stick between the lines and it pulled me out of my comfort zone a bit. If you're like me, you have hooded lids. Um, if you kind of listen to a lot of advice and makeup tutorials by people who have like a lot larger eye sets without any kind of hooded eyelid problem, they'll talk about putting colours in the crease and on the lid um, and just keeping it to that eye area. However, if I do that, it kind of shrinks my eyes right down because my crease is quite low and it's quite hooded it will make my eye look smaller if I've just got a 
impact of colour here and then nothing above it. So something that I learned, which makes a huge difference, is to bring your colour up. It's a bit scary, but it will pay off. Makeup is a process. Um, but if you bring your colour, so my crease is, you can see my crease is lower than where my colour is. Um, but it helps open my eye up wider to bring it above it. So I will blend higher than people with big eyes would need to. I will try and blend more up by my brow bone, as you can see here. I'll blend the makeup a bit more further up to here. And I'll bring my colour just above that crease line. Um, to help give the illusion of my eyes being bigger than they are um, because I suffer with hooded lids and they look saggy and horrible. <laughs> Not everyone necessarily needs to do this. People who suffer with hooded eyelids, it will help give that illusion of a bigger eye. If you've got massive eyes anyway, sack it off. It's fine. <laughs> Just put the colour where your eye is, um, where your eyelid is. But um, for anyone who suffers the same as me and their eyes are a bit smaller or a bit more hooded, just push yourself out of that comfort and just put the colour just above and blend higher. Do like a, a faux crease. Imagine your crease is just like a centimetre higher than it is and kind of blend more above there. And it will give, it's kind of like drag inspired, it will give that illusion of a bigger eye. Um, and it will look a lot nicer. Tip number nine, cut creasing. That sounds really daunting to anyone who doesn't do makeup all the time. Um, I'm not telling you to cut crease all the time. But all cut creasing is, is using your primer, some primers, like my P. Louise is perfect for it, or concealers, or there are some um, particular cut crease products out there. I know, I think Revolution did one that's quite highly rated, I haven't tried it. But um, using one of those as a base before you put that colour down wherever you want it. So people will typically do it on the inner third and you'll just take a concealer brush. Where's my concealer brush? So mine, I used it today, so it's gunky, sorry. But just a flat, round top, tightly packed brush. Um, and you'll use your concealer or your base and you'll, they, people will tend to just kind of lay that down and pack it where they want that colour payoff. So if you're wanting a bright blue there or whatever, or a bright gold like I that I did today, I actually used um, a wet eyeshadow for mine as a base, which you can also use. But you want to lay something wet down to stick and to adhere to it. If you're wanting to have a bright tone on top of the blended eye look that you've done, cut crease it or lay down a base for it on top of what you've done, if that makes sense. And finally, tip number 10, uh, shimmer shadows. So, I love shimmer shadows, I think they're lovely. However, shimmery things, shimmer shadows, highlighters, they reflect the light so they will enhance whatever they're on, if this is making sense. So, basically, if you have more mature skin, or if you're wanting to put like a whole eye of shimmer shadows and you've got quite a lot of creasing above like I have, if you put it on top of where your creasing is, it will just enhance it. So you want to avoid really using a shimmer shadow anywhere near your creases. Um, if you're wanting a glittery, shimmery look, then you're best off just putting it in the inner part of your eye um, to highlight and make it look a bit bigger. Whereas if you put the shimmer everywhere, it won't it won't make your eyes look bigger or just kind of bring attention to any kind of wrinkles or creases that you've got there. For more mature skin, it will just highlight um, any texture on the eyelid and it, you're better off avoiding it. And the same kind of thing goes for highlighter. Like I don't pull my highlighter too far in because I've got a lot of texture here. If you've got really, really textured skin and you're highlighting on top of that, it will just bring attention to the fact that it's textured. So if you've got really, really, really bad crow's feet or wrinkles around the base of your eyes, if you highlight there, you'll see it. <laughs> uh, the light will catch it and it will bring attention to that. So basically anything with a shimmer or a highlight, you want to avoid it in textured, creased areas. I hope that was helpful for some people. Um, it's just 10 basic things that I thought of that I know a lot of people I've 
told and they weren't aware of or they didn't know. It's just basic steps to start being more confident in makeup and to learn a bit more about it um, and hopefully give you some tips and tricks to take away. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will probably come up with another one soon enough with just some extra tips and tricks that I've thought of or come across um, during work or during my personal experience. But yeah, if, if there's anything that helped you stay, let me know in the comments. If there's anything that you'd kind of have more queries on or you'd like to see, just let me know. And hopefully I will see you again soon. Alright, thanks. Bye! Thanks for watching. Me bumble my way through.